All right, if you're a Proxmox user, you know the routine, right? It's click, click, configure, install, and then do it all over again. But what if I told you there's this incredible tool baked right into Proxmox that almost nobody is using? Today, we are diving deep into the world of cloud init automation, and trust me, it's a total game changer. Okay, let me ask you something. How long does it actually take you to get a new VM up and running? I don't mean just installed, I mean fully configured, hardened, secure, and actually ready to do work. What if you could get all that done, perfectly, every single time, in just a couple of minutes? Yep, two minutes. That's the magic number. I know, it sounds kind of nuts, right? Going from absolutely nothing to a fully deployed, production-ready virtual machine in the time it takes to make a cup of coffee, but it is absolutely possible. And look, in those two minutes, we're not talking about some bare-bones install. We're talking a Debian 13 base with Docker ready to roll, security best practices already baked in, and even really smart stuff like putting swap on ZRAM. That's a clever trick that uses a bit of your RAM for swap, so you're not constantly wearing out your expensive SSTs. This is the whole shebang. So, you gotta be wondering, what's the catch, right? I mean, if a system this good, this efficient, exists right inside Proxmox, why isn't everybody doing it? It seems way too good to be true. And that's really the big mystery we're gonna unpack today. We're gonna figure out why so many of us are still stuck in that click, click, click world of the GUI when there's a much, much better way just sitting there waiting for us. Well, after digging around, it seems to boil down to about five main reasons people are hesitant to jump in. So let's just go through them one by one and figure out what's really going on here. Okay, reason number one, and let's be honest, this is a big one for a lot of us. It's the tinkerer mindset. We're not running some giant data center, right? We're in our home labs. We're playing around. We're breaking stuff. We're learning. And for that kind of one-off job, the old manual way just feels, well, good enough. Now, the magic behind all this automation is this thing called cloud init. It's basically the industry standard for telling a virtual machine what to do on its very first boot. Think of it as the set of instructions a brand new computer reads the very first time it turns on. And the crazy part, it's already in Proxmox, just sitting there. But that actually brings us right to our second problem. Cloud init feels weird and mysterious. You know that cloud init tab in the GUI? Yeah, the one we all ignore and just click right past. The docs can be a little hard to find, and here's the real kicker. You can't just use your standard Debian installer ISO. You need a special cloud image. And if you don't know that, you're gonna get stuck fast. Now for reason three. This is where the diehard DevOps folks jump in and say, just use Terraform, use Packer. And hey, they're not wrong if you're managing 100 servers. But for most of us in a home lab, that's like using a sledgehammer to build a birdhouse. It's total overkill. Cloud init is the perfect middle ground. You get all the power of automation without having to learn a new language or manage these complicated state files. Okay, number four is a little bit of a technical gotcha, and it's all about storage. Basically, this specific method really, really loves advanced storage, like ZFS or a network share. So if you're just running Proxmox on a single hard drive with the default local storage setup, it's gonna trip you up right out of the gate. It's totally fixable, but it's an extra hurdle and it's enough to make some people just give up. And that brings us to the last reason. And honestly, I think this is the biggest one by a mile. It's summed up perfectly by this quote from someone in the community. The main reason more of us aren't doing this is we just don't know it's an option. We haven't seen how powerful and frankly, how easy it can be. All right, so we've talked about all the why nots. Let's flip the script. Let's talk about why this should be your new go-to method, your default workflow for making any new VM from now on. Look, this is about so much more than just saving a few minutes. This is about working smarter. First, your setups become perfectly reproducible. Your server dies, who cares? You can rebuild it exactly the same way in minutes. Second, it's secure from the very first boot. And third, it's portable. You make one perfect template, and then you can just stamp out copies whenever you need them. And here's something that I think is huge. Peace of mind. We've all been there, right? Copying and pasting some random script from a forum post from 10 years ago and just praying it works. This is different. Your entire server setup is in a simple, readable file. You can actually understand it. You can even save it in Git. It's automation you can actually trust. So if you're still clicking your way through that VM creation wizard, maybe it's time for an upgrade. It's time to graduate from the manual way of doing things and let automation do the boring stuff for you.
And let me be super clear about this. This isn't some crazy, complex DevOps wizardry. We're not asking you to become a Kubernetes expert overnight. Just think of this as the first easy step, a gentle nudge into the world of automation using a powerful tool that you already have. And that brings us right back to where we started. This is about a fundamental shift in how you think. It's about going from being a tinkerer, building things one at a time, to being an automator, building systems that are strong and reproducible. Cloud in it is the easiest first step on that journey. So the question isn't just, why are you still creating VMs by hand? The real question is, are you ready to level up your game?